So I'm Pierre Van der Beken, and today, thanks to my colleagues, I will be able to present uh, the deep learning observation operator I'm currently developing in the frame of Corso European project to assimilate SIF, so solar induced fluorescence, into the LDAS pond system. So just a quick reminder that LDASMON stands for Land Data Assimilation System. This is the platform where in Meteo France we assimilate observation into a land surface model. In our case, our land surface model is one dimensional with 14 soil layers up to 12 meters depth. And in our case, we will use the ISBA AGS uh, vegetation model to, because it's explicitly simulating photosynthesis and leaf area index. So the assimilation scheme is a sequential one. It is a simplified extended Kalman filter, which means that our observation operator should be within the linear approximation. So the product that we want to assimilate into our surface model is SIF. So this is solar induced fluorescence. This is a part of the solar radiation caught by the leaf that is remitted back to the chlorophyll in the far red than the near infrared. This signal is now captured uh, by our heliosynchrone uh, tropomy instrument embodied in Sentinel-5P. Thanks to tropomy's characteristic, we've got with is 14 orbit per day and is large swath, we are able to capture the whole globe within a day. As you can see, you have an example of SIF measurement over the whole globe for the 1st of June 2019. So troposif is not a level one, but a level two product. It is daily file. We take the SIF given in the windows of 743 nanometers up to 758 nanometers. This is a product that is known to be less sensitive to uh, cloud contamination, but in the end, we have still around 30% of relative error. So due to some processings, we have some non-physical values that should be removed and we will read on a pixel size of 0.25 for the assimilation. So as I said that we were using the deep learning, so that means training an artificial uh, neural network on a large database. So we have to pick up a couple of predictors. So in our case, some geometrical data like latitude, longitude, day of year, the parameters that uh, are involved in the process, like uh, the solar fluxes, the soil temperature, soil moisture, the leaf area index, and some other fluxes like the gross pr uh, primary uh, product or evapotranspiration. In the end, we wanted to keep it simple. So we choose to take only latitude, longitude, and day of year as fixed parameters and to use LAI, our physical uh, proxy for the SIF. And since we don't want to learn the model biases, we choose to use LAI observed by ProbaV to train our neural network. So the data set is a global data set at 0 0.25 degrees of resolution to match uh, the ERA-5 resolution. From 2018, the start of tropomy uh, instrument uh, data up to 2022. The training part will be from May 2019 up to April 2019, which represent roughly one year of data and the testing part which is independent will be from May 2019 up to April 2020. This way we are sure that the test and the train will not share any uh, redundant values. So the architecture we choose is a fit for one neural network because we were familiar with such kind of architecture and we managed to assimilate ASCAT sigma not uh, before into uh, ISBA thanks to such kind of architectures. So it is two indense layers of 128 neurons with activation of ReLU batch normalization layers to make sure that we are not getting too much overfitting. In the end, uh, after some optimization of the EPA parameters, we choose to take the batch size of 256 to have an accurate gradient. A 100 epochs and a learning rate decay 
uh, that decay every 20 epochs. After the training over the train part, we get to test the overall Pearson correlation we have on the um, on the test part. And as you can see, we reach about 0 0.85 over the whole year. And if you look at on this figure on the uh, left, uh, on the right corner, you can see that the ne neural network prediction tend to match well troposive value in when uh, they are low. And when it comes to high value of troposive, the neural network is struggling a little. So now, if you look at on the world map, how it spread, those, re those results are spread. As you can see, over the world test year, the Pearson correlation is above 0 0.8 everywhere, almost, except in some peculiar region like the Amazonia, Amazonia and Australia are very high latitude. The mean relative error also is kind of uniform over the whole globe, above 20%, but around in between 20% and 30%, which correspond to the relative error of the observation. And as you can see, we have roughly 200 points per pixels over the test year, meaning that we have more than one observation every two days, which is way better than the LEI, the synthesis, 10 day synthesis we are currently assimilating. So some optimization can be made by, on the training to make sure that to get a better person correlation. But in the end, what the matter is that we will be able or not to assimilate uh, in ISBA. So that's why we straight uh, went ahead and tried to assimilate on a small domain. So we choose to take the Ebro uh, Basin. Why? Because there is a heavily uh, irrigated crop field around there that are not catch up easily by the surface model. We train in our network at 0 0.1 and not at 0 0.25 degrees to not have uh, issue due to downscaling. So after some experiments, we made an experiment using a simulation of CIF only at 20% of relative error and with CIF plus LAI at 20% of error. Uh, for relative error. As you can see, the first thing is that assimilating CIF only give quite good impact compared to the open loop over uh, the whole domain, while assim both assimilating CIF and LAI will drastically improve the behavior. So we have a very good RMSC if we both assimilate uh, the two data on the LAI. So when we compare to a simulation of only LEI, we can see that troposif are more or less the same benefit, uh, especially if we reduce the value of the error on CIF. But it is the best to uh, co-assimilate both LEI and troposif. So now in terms of local scale, so here you have the LEI uh, evolution from July up to December 2019 from the open loop for the analysis and the differences. And you can see we kind of captured this highly heavily, uh, heavily irrigated crop fields in the Ebro Basin. That can be also seen in this temporal uh, analysis on a given pixels. So we both increase the LAI during summer and the CIF compared to the open loop and the humidity is also higher in those areas. And we have a pretty good match with the observations that are in green. So to conclude, we train up up to the global scale on a simple neural network uh, observation operator for troposif. We managed to assimilate troposif into a small domain, but which has a very complex surface with irrigated crops. We showed that this is good to assimilate CIF, but it is even better to co-assimilate LAI and CIF. As you can see here, you have the RMSC of LAI by uh, only assimilating LAI and here by assimilating both observation and we get much better results. So we have to check now its relevance in time, meaning that when we should retrain the neural network or add more data to the training,
a simulator at the global scale, which is work in progress and compared to in-situ measurement of CIF. If you have any question, feel free to 